Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another interview this time around. My good friend Jorge and his lovely family was visiting the Netherlands from the UK, and I decided why not ask him to join me in an interview, especially since he's an in-house designer. A couple of caveats before the video starts. The lighting conditions weren't that good at all, sorry about that, and his lovely baby girl Sarah decided to participate in the interview as well, especially in the beginning part, so you'll hear her a little bit talk and you'll also see her. Jorge was so kind and gave me a lot of footage and also sketches about the process that goes on in his daily design life, and also a little bit about manufacturing there. So make sure to stick around, there's quite a bit of really good footage in the middle and also towards the end. So with all that said, Let's jump right into it. Hi. Um, would you be so kind to introduce yourself quickly? I'm Jorge Gomez, and I am an industrial designer. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> how, how old are you? I'm 35. 35. And yeah. uh, where did you study? In a, I, I studied a bachelor's degree in industrial design. Uh, bachelor of Arts in industrial design in Mexico, in the Metropolitan Autonomous University. Okay. in Mexico City, and then I studied um, a Master's of Industrial Design Engineering in TU Delft. What uh, attracted you to industrial design? Um, so I was following a career path uh, very close to STEM, like physics and uh, science and maths. Uh, I wanted to study in initially robotics engineering uh, when I was much younger. Uh, I didn't manage to get into the school for robotics, but I got into mechanical engineering, and I I did like the the part of kind of designing stuff, like creating stuff, but not the not the very uh, theoretical part of it. And then um, I remember my father told me, "Oh, there's a career called industrial design, and you can you can design cars if you, you can make the cars if you study that." And pretty much that was it. That's why I went for it. So, so car design basically. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't car. It wasn't, it wasn't car design. Unlike most, the most famous um, car designers are not even the most famous. The people who are passionate about it draw a car almost every day. Yeah, I never did that. So it was. It wasn't really car design what drew me in. But it was like ah, oh, so like things like car. Oh, no, that, that looks yeah interesting. So then, how do you see the, the 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 role of sketching? Because apparently you didn't like you didn't like sketching cars, or didn't like sketching that much in well, general. Well, not that I didn't like it. It's just I I wasn't I wasn't used to it. I was not, I wasn't I, I didn't believe I was gifted with the uh, with drawing. Um, <clears throat> so about sketching, I mean, it, it's something I learned along the way. And so it, it didn't seem important to you or, or you didn't have the impression that uh, sketching and industrial design have to go together necessarily? Oh, uh, well, no. So from the, from the moment I started studying industrial design, it became clear sketching was, uh, was something that every time you use as part of the process. But uh, what I mean is that I just didn't have it from the beginning. I, was, I wasn't drawing stuff before I started studying industrial design. When I started studying industrial design, I realized, oh, I have to learn to draw. Actually, I, I remember the first courses were all about just making like hand-drawn lines all day in, in a paper, to do, and you had to deliver like a, a hundred pages at the end with just lines and triangles and squares, and, you know? But, but this wasn't Delft, this was already in Mexico, right? Yeah, yeah it was yeah, yeah. in Mexico. And uh, how many years was, uh, was um, the study there? <clears throat> Four. Four years, mm -hmm. bachelor's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four years, bachelor's. And then uh, the decision to do industrial design was immediate. Uh, I mean, the decision to do masters was it immediate uh, after you finished there? No, no, no. I thought I thought I would work for a while and see and understand why I wanted to do with my life. And uh, and for how long did you work? Uh, just a year and a half. As as what? As industrial designer. No, in what sort of company? I'm packaging, at? packaging design. Packaging design. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then you came to the Netherlands, <coughs> did your master's in integrated product design. That's it. And then after that? After that, uh, well, I, I did my graduation project with a, with a company, with a startup here. Um, and uh, when I finished the graduation project, I continued working with them for a year, another year and a half, almost two years. So there was, there was a lot of research there because it, being a startup, it meant uh, we had to define what kind of products we were made, we were going to make so there was a lot of research into like how far sensors can see and how many sensors do you need to put in order to because it was it was a startup dedicated to creating sensors for streetlights yeah 
to control uh, to to make light dynamic in the cities. Yeah, kind of a the the ultimate vision was an I, uh, IoT smart city platform. Um, but I was working in the hardware, like creating the the sensors and the enclosures and how they were mounted in the on the poles and all of that. Um, so yeah, first thing I was to understand like what sensors can you use, how do they behave uh, in different heights, for example, at different lengths. How can you how can you um, make sure you detect cars, bicycles, people, and all that. So that is, there was a lot of research research into that and also into understanding what context you can put those things on, because obviously not the same, a tiny little street where pedestrians, bicycles and cars share just a one lane or maybe two lanes to a motorway where there's like three or four lanes, at least very different. No? So like the three slides are mounted in the different ways in the motorway they're like 10 meters or 12 meters high. Well, you know, it's most of the three. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of work on understanding that. And um, just a little work on <laughs> doing the on actual design, doing, doing, doing sketching, and yeah. But there, there was a, there was a part of it because when we define like how many sensors we put there and uh, how how they have to be oriented and everything, was okay. Then how do we make it look cool? <laughs> so so it being a startup, were you the only industrial designer? Uh, no, no, you know, we're technically three, uh, but only two really doing uh, product design. And the and the other the, the third person? Uh, well, he, his background was more of uh, like electronic engineering. Okay, so he was so he, he was, was more in hardware. Yeah, a bit more, a bit more hardware in terms of like circuitry and all that jazz. All right. Okay. Let me let me jump back a, a minute. Um, what would you say was the most important tool or takeaway from your industrial design studies, masters or bachelors, whichever you you found that you took something away from it? I would say process, definitely. Process of, uh, um, well, I mean, nowadays it's, it has evolved into several several different kind of philosophies of design, of design. I pretty much follow the lean product development kind of method. But it was that, that basic, um, uh, yeah, methodology that you have to understand first uh, the problem, yeah, and then you can go into, try to, uh, Come up with solutions and just iterate on that kind of cycle of of designing something and then see if it works and then you you know you move into more detailed part of the design so it was kind of that that uh, overall layout of of a process that was probably the most valuable and then could you maybe really shortly describe the the lean method of working for people who might not know that well it's based on i think it's based on a on a on a cycle again of um of a kind of creating a concept, testing and learning from it. And it's kind of based on, on a loop on, on doing that. So if you have a problem, uh, you come up with a simpler solution. You can, you can possibly come uh, up with to test your assumptions and then you test your assumptions, assumptions with users and learn from that and reiterate. So, so a whole lot of iteration. iteration yeah, yeah, it, work, it works very well for a digital product design, for example, mm -hmm. because you can you can, you can can make iterations really quickly of just changing some some code and then you have another iteration of your software or whatever it is yeah. that you're creating. Hardware works a little bit more, it's a bit more difficult. But sometimes but, it means you have to go, you have to make like cardboard prototypes that don't work very well and you still have to manage to learn some stuff from, from it, yeah? When you give it to people to use it. <clears throat> Maybe people won't understand it. Like, oh, what is this? Is the final thing I made or covered it in slow explaining. But, but there still is value in there, yeah, so you can still apply value. it yeah, for yeah. for a sure. harder process as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, then let's jump back to you were working after after university, uh, after you were done with your masters, and then you moved to the United Kingdom yeah, at United one point. Kingdom. And what are you working there now? Uh, now I'm designing light fixtures. So, so you, st you, you kind of st stuck in the, in the, not stuck, but you stayed with the same, uh, same, uh, <coughs> oh, profile. Well, no, you, you, you skip, you skip a bit of, uh, Netherlands. I worked for a, for a company that made, uh, for garden furniture before that. After, after the, the sensors. Yeah. Bit, then there was garden furniture for, uh, for, uh, just, just shorter, short from a year. And what, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that in that case? That, that was, that was. Purely industrial design, so yeah, just like making making uh, sure things look appealing and nice. 
Okay, so you didn't have to do any like proper manufacturing there. It's it's, it's just no. the the, for, the form giving yeah, shaping. Yeah. yeah, that was that was that was it. And what tools were you using there most? Uh, tools in, in terms of sketching, three D programs, research. What 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 were you doing the most? Yeah, so you no, said it's pure industrial design. Yeah, so re research would be more the more traditional uh, uh, kind of inspirational research you do in industrial design when you try to come up with with shapes. So you just get fed with a lot of shapes and uh, how all the tables look like and uh, what maybe what they are there for um and then yeah a lot of sketching that was, that was that was a lot of sketching okay so actually hand sketching yeah 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 okay yeah but yeah, cool i mean the the way i've always approached this is more of a of a tool than uh, than anything else so i don't I, and a lot, of, a lot of people do that i don't tend to, to do pretty sketches just to understand my own ideas because most of the time you don't show that to anybody but I didn't have to do sketching to show anybody. I mean, the only the ultimate thing we would show to the to the people that needed to see the product would be a rendering. Because, but you did uh, that as well yourself. Yeah, yeah I did that. So, but so you sketching mostly in in idea generation and exploring yeah. your own ideas. It yeah, didn't exactly. have to be pretty. That's that's yeah. what you're saying. And maybe maybe my my boss will, would look at them and then to see to see if she kind of agreed with the direction everything was going. Yeah, that was those it. it was not. I didn't need to make them look amazing. It was just like, oh, look, this corner is going to be like this round, and, uh, and this is going to be like this thick. And yeah. And then after sketching, you jumped into a 3D, 3D <clears throat> yeah, a yeah. CAD program. Yeah, right away. SolidWorks? Yeah, SolidWorks. SolidWorks. SolidWorks in T-Shirt. T-Shirt. Okay. And um, all right. So that, that, that is that is like the more uh, typical thing that people think of when, yeah. when somebody mentions industrial design. So what are you doing now? Is is it different or is, is it uh, similar? Uh, <clears throat> similar in ways, different in other ways, because now it's a, um, for example, in that part, I didn't see the whole product cycle, well, it was like until there was a point where uh, it needed to go into into manufacturing of the, everything was injection molding. Uh, so when you had to go to mold making, I would hand it to the engineers and they would do, they would take care of all the draft angles, for example, and all the the heights of the ribs and all that, you know, all that construction, structural construction of the of the furniture. Now nowadays, I do have to see everything from not in not in every single product I work in, but yeah, more than a few. I have had to take it from like the brief, and then uh, just create the create the visual the visual concept of the of the luminaire, and then going to do the detail design and design for manufacturing and all that. Okay, and so. Do you like actually make engineering decisions as well, or do you still have engineers within the company who have to green light something that that you decide? No, no, I do have engineering decisions there. Okay, as well, as well as the, yeah, it's, it's the really full cycle. All the industrial design of it, then all the all the um, design engineering of it, and even going to even going to assembly. So, I, for example, when I finish, when something is tooled and and uh, cannot be changed, it goes into into the section where you. Had to um, how to kind of teach people how to put it together because the first time you are putting things together, right? And then you have to move it into a production line. So I also I also go and do that. I also like book um, uh, like time with people in in production, and then they say, oh, this person is going to be the one that builds it. And I go down and then actually teach them how to how to build a oh, thing. So that's, that's cool. Very cool. I like that. Um, and just let me jump back a little bit to when you were working in Mexico. Was that an industrial design agency, or were you also an in-house industrial designer? No, in-house industrial designer. Yeah, that that was a that was a bit of a failure, to be honest, <laughs> because uh, the company the company didn't have an industrial design department, and they hired three people that recently graduated, and uh, it was a little bit of a, of a mess. They didn't really come up with anything anything meaningful. It was an interesting company, though, a big company, but mostly doing manufacturing for other companies. So they would make bottles for Coca-Cola or for uh, or cans for, I don't know if you know anything, and just food brands and, and paints and oils and all, the, all this, those things. Yeah. Okay. But, but mostly manufacturing for, for other people. So then most of your experience working as an industrial designer was always an in-house industrial designer yeah. for a specific brand. Yeah. In yeah, that case. Them, yeah. All right. And then... Also jumping a little bit back to the education, but let's let's start with 
how 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 is it working within the industrial design field in in different countries than because you worked in Mexico, you worked in the Netherlands, and now you're working in mm-hmm. the UK? Are there differences between what industrial design means and how how it is to work for industrial design companies within different countries and cultures? Right. Yeah. I think I think there's there's definitely differences. So unfortunately, I cannot say so much about Mexico because I worked there quite shortly. Well, one year and a half is not it's not near enough, and as I said. The company wasn't the best example for a, for a well-structured uh, company that uh, embraces design. But um, I mean, in general, I think their design is growing. But when I was when I was there, it was there was there wasn't much much design happening. So that's what what that was one of the, of the reasons that uh, made me choose to move in, in Europe, particularly. Um, then. Um, I can I can compare more the view of maybe industrial design in uh, UK and Netherlands. Mm-hmm. So I, I think in in the Netherlands is um, is what I is closer the, the perception of industrial design is closer to what I always understood from it, which is um, like uh, you know creating products from from just an idea until until manufacturing, and it's it's not just it's not just sketching; it's taking care of all. Everything like the uh, even the understanding the, the problem and understanding the theoretical background, uh, doing all the research, and then going to ideation, doing sketching, and, and then even even further to define experiences and all that. It like it's like a whole package of things. Yeah. Well, in the UK, I think it's a lot more divided. Or at least I've, I've had also limited experience with people studying in different universities. Right. And I don't know from all universities, uh, but from what I've gathered is things are a bit more more divided so industrial design is really just sketching so and i think a lot of people understand just that uh if you're an industrial designer you will come up with crazy ideas that are not feasible or at least that's what that's what some engineers think as well and then there's this product design which which just goes goes a little bit overlaps with industrial design in kind of a kind of a creative bit but goes further into the engineering yeah and uh, that would probably be closer to what we do, yeah. maybe. Uh, and then there's the design engineers who, who almost don't like use creative tools in quotes because. It, so then they're purely engineers in the end. Not not purely because then they have mechanical engineers. So the design engineers um, probably does a lot of CAD and uh, also kind of comes with comes up with solutions, but based on industrial designs, you know, it just covers a part of the process that maybe the industrial designer doesn't get to anymore. And then there's, yeah, the mechanical engineer is just a hardcore engineer. So then what, if, if, if you would have a, not a timeline, but let, let, let's say some sort of diagram, then in the front is the industrial design, then the product design, and then the design engineer. Yeah. And you and me, j- just to make it a bit more clear for, for the viewers and listeners as well, we studied industrial design engineering, yeah. which sort of has so all of every, this in, yeah. in one. Yeah, exactly. And it's a difficult thing to convey. Like, so what are you? Are you an industrial designer? Yeah, but uh, I'm also a product designer. And, uh, oh, uh, but I can also do design engineering. So it's like, you cover a lot of ground. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes people think it's like, oh, that's not maybe not specialized enough, or I don't know. But. So that, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting question. And is, is that uh, uh, something uh, positive or negative, being being a tool of this many trades, rather than, than that specialized in a country like, like the UK, where they, where they really seem to put them into boxes? I want to believe is, is a positive thing, because um, ultimately, if I think someone should should see the value of of uh, of like personal understanding, I'm not I'm not saying also I'm not saying that the people in all everyone in the UK is the same, right? And uh, that that a product designer doesn't cover industrial design or or further design engineering. I'm, I'm sure many do, but like value of, of knowing having a person who or yeah the, the, the designer to understand like the entire process. Um, if people understand that, I think is is a great asset. Problem is when when people don't, and uh, they just want to, or, or or when they have an understanding of, of one thing and then just want that thing, then it's difficult to, yeah, convey the message that you can do you can do more, yeah. And fu- funnily enough, I found that experience um, common in design agencies when interviewing design agencies. I think, oh, I mean, it's something they never tell you, but I think the fact that that I was kind of a bit uh, 
selling the, that whole package was like, I was like, oh no, you just, we just want to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just pretty sketchy selling. But this was mostly in the UK, not, yeah, yeah, not here. Yeah. No, not here. Okay. But so I, I would say a good positive takeaway for people who want to study uh, or are right now studying industrial design is for the future that they can specialize, but they can be also a little bit broad. Yeah. There's jobs for jobs for everything there's out there. There's jobs for everything, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just about finding the one. If, if your potential employer wants, wants just an industrial design, then you definitely have to highlight that. And it's good to understand it in advance because if you are... Yeah, if you if you don't know, uh, as I didn't. So when 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 I, for example, when I just moved to the UK and I saw an industrial design position, I would just send my portfolios covering everything. Yeah, and probably they weren't they weren't interested in half of it because interested in half of it is they, they thought I, would, I just want industrial design. Okay, so it, it's 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 interesting to know that as an industrial designer, you have to even subdivide your portfolio for industrial design or product design. Or, or design engineering in this case for at least for different markets. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I'm saying you have to do it every all the time, but I'm saying you have to understand when yeah. you have to do it. So you, you do have to understand the market. Yeah. So, so you have to do the you have to use the knowledge that you learned as an industry designer to do <laughs> proper research <laughs> and apply it for your for your job applications yeah, in this yeah, case. Yeah. Okay, let me just jump back one more time for to, to your studies because as as we compared uh, work industrial design work across countries, I'm also co- uh, curious about how do, does the, the teaching of industrial design compare from Mexico, where you did four years, to the Netherlands, where you did two years, so masters and bachelors. Mm-hmm. So, what's is are there any significant differences that you noticed in the teaching style? Yeah, e, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean that that's also, that, also come, that also comes down to culture. Um, but I mean, going just strictly on the, on the teaching style, um, well, first of all, the university I studied in is, um, focuses the efforts of the, of design into benefiting society. Mm -hmm. And for example, there there are some universities that, that, um, are more kind of entrepreneurial style. My university wasn't, it was more, more about like thinking of society as a whole and not so much individual, so much creating products that will sell well, but rather than... So uh, really the social aspect, bettering the yeah, life of pe- people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a lot of, a big focus on that. So I think that influenced a lot also the, the, the teaching style. And so every, every different uh, term we would have for a semester, we would have a kind of a topic and it would get broader. So the, the very first kind of design workshop class that you had, it was focusing on designing something for individuals. <laughs> And then, then when you move to the next semester, you will be uh, focused on a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. And then next step will be a community, say for example, a hospital or a, or a elderly house or something like that. And then it grew. I don't remember everything. Then for a city, and then for the entire world, like globalization or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it would that it would be that approach. And um, I mean, in, as for teaching style, there was a lot of a lot of uh, design history, a lot of art history uh, and all of that and well now going going to the Netherlands there was for example nothing of that we never saw uh, anything related to art or anything like that. Um, but, but does that have to do that so because what we saw it was this industrial design engineering and it is within within the masters of science mm-hmm. and your bachelor wasn't that an ma maybe a ba yeah well ba sorry yeah, yeah. BA, yeah. so okay that's 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 where's the difference but then yeah. how, how did you go so you didn't have industrial design that was ms uh, or uh, science related no. because you, you said you wanted to study uh, robotics and mechanical mm-hmm. engineering mm-hmm. and i thought you would choose sort of industrial design that would have to do with this but then there's there's no industrial design that's not art related uh, I, I know, I believe that there is just in a different school. A different school. Different okay. Okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, the, I mean, the, the two universities I would have studied, the National University, which is the biggest university in Mexico, also it offers a Bachelor of Arts in those mm-hmm. sciences, and the university I studied in the same. So, I would have had to go to, a, I think there, there are a few private universities who do industrial design engineering as bachelors, but I didn't want to, do, to go to a private school. All right, and then to uh, slowly round it up, last two questions. Uh, what product uh, do you have your hand in designing that you're the proudest of? Do you remember? The proudest of? Yeah. Um, there's a product I'm really proud of. Uh, that is, uh, it's uh, quite, quite recent. Uh, so we launched last year, and it's a uh, linear lighting. It's called Axiolinium. And the concept of it is, the concept of it is 
having a continuous line of lights for for like retail. So just uh, I don't know if you if you think of linear fittings, they kind of there's an entity and then there's kind of a gap maybe or some sort of, sort of connection that there's another yeah. entity yeah. of light. Right? What we want to create is like just just a line of lights, so or a, a customer could install just a yeah, just a run of, of lights and seeing you know like everything connected seamless, seamlessly and everything. Um, and so the challenge with that, with that, there were many challenges with that. Like, how, how do you make the connection that a connection that is not visible and then that is mechanical and then how you connect everything electrically so the so the electricity goes one from one thing to another? Then how do you mount that? And then so there, there was there was a lot of work on that. Uh, I won't go into much detail, but we came with very clever solutions. Of uh, we focus a lot of on on usability and making th- uh, making it easier to install, for example. Um, and so all the operation is toolless. You don't need any any sort of tool to connect each luminaire. You don't need any tool to mount them on the ceiling, apart from apart from making a hole to put a wire through. But <laughs> <laughs> everyone has to do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. And um, and every time I talk to somebody, they they always give that feedback. It's, am- it's an amazing product. It's, it's, you can do you can do so much with it, and it's so flexible. Like uh, I mean, you can. It's it's also the first the first kind of of its uh, of of a product in, in, in the lighting field because um, we also made it so, I mean, we call it modular as in you have, so to power light you need you need a, a driver, yeah, that, that provides DC to convert the AC current to DC current. Yeah. And for that, I mean, there's, there's a device called a driver that will power your LEDs, get the, the main input and power your LEDs. So we, we made kind of boxes that you can put on the, on, in the chassis of the, of the luminaire and uh, it's kind of a just like drop and slide kind of operation to connect different things. So you can, for example, you have a, a power of uh, 60 watts, which is a high power, and but you think, ah, that's too much light and I want a less powerful lamp. So you can just remove that and put uh, a lower power module and then just click it and it's it's done. You know, you don't have to hardwire anything. You don't have to go into, yeah, into disconnecting wires and uh, uh, be concerned with safety or anything, but also then you can you can add, for example, there every building has requirements for having emergency lighting in case there's a power outage or a fire or something, and then they, all the lights go off, and then there's just a few lights that guide the way to exits. Yeah, so this luminaire can be that as well, and you don't have to do anything but drop a module that converts it into a into a, an emergency light, uh, emergency fitting. The the module has batteries and everything, so you just connect it and. It's done. Nice. An emergency light, and uh, that that hasn't been launched. But then there's also a module that is this has a has a, a a wireless interface unit, and then you can connect a sensor to that to that unit as well. So you, you will uh, soon you will be able to or the customers that buy that fitting will be able to buy this little module and then just add it and then they have smart lights so they can control the lights in the app and everything. All right, and then uh, last question. Uh, what is the most important thing, in your opinion, you would want people to know about industrial design? I think that, that conception the, that uh, many people may have that industrial designers just make pretty things, and uh, it's something I, I believe industrial designers have been fighting through for several years. Like, ah, oh, so you are a designer, so you design chairs. Right, that a lot of people share the same kind of thought. Um, so the most important thing probably is, is that the industrial designers don't. The industrial designer or product designer's job is not to make pretty things; it's to solve problems and make lives better. Yeah, I like that. That's uh, I think that's a perfect way to end this interview. Wonderful. So, thank you very much, Jorge. No and... problem. My pleasure, Bob.